Section 3.2 is the product and quotient rules. So in the previous section we had seen four basic rules. To our list we're going to add two more rules today in this section. So rule 5 is the product rule. And as the name indicates, we're looking at the product of two functions. So if you have y as equal to the product of two functions, f of x and g of x, so it's f times g, then according to this rule, at y prime is equal to not the product of the derivatives that you might, as you might expect, but rather you take the derivative of the first, keep the second as it is, plus keep the first as it is, and multiply it with the derivative of the second. So it's kind of strange how it works but I can show you with an example as to why it is the way it is. So let's do that right away. Example 1, let's say y is equal to x cubed plus x squared times 3x to the fourth plus 10x. Now, if we were to use the product rule, we would have to call this f, and call this g, take the derivative of the first, f prime, so you get 3x squared plus 2x. Now it is very important that we use parentheses or else the order of operations will be off. So this is f prime. And then you copy g as is, 3x to the fourth plus 10x. Plus, then you keep the first guy as it is, f. So it's x cubed plus x squared. And then secondly, take the derivative of g. So that's 12x cubed plus 10. So I'm just using the rules from the previous section. So this is f prime g plus f g prime. Now, normally you would stop there, but because we're trying to check and see if this rule is actually the way it should be, we're going to multiply this out really quickly, doing some FOIL, 9x to the 6th plus 30x cubed plus 6x to the 5th plus 20x squared. FOIL this, 12x to the 6th plus 10x cubed plus 12x to the 5th plus 10x squared. Combine like terms, 21x to the 6th, that's these two, plus um, 18x to the 5th, that's those two, and then x cubes will be 40x cubes, and then 30x squared. I think we got them all covered. Now where I'm going with this is we're going to do the same example by the old method. Old meaning from the last section where you take y and you have the product but you can't take the derivative as is rather you would rewrite so you would multiply first do the FOIL 3x to the 7th plus 10x to the 4th plus 3x to the 6th plus 10x cubed and once it's in this format you would use the basic rules from 3.1 and you get 7 comes down 21x to the 6th 4 comes down 40x cubed, 18x to the fifth, plus 30x squared. And this, if you were to compare it with that answer, it matches. There's all these terms, not quite lined up, but the same thing. So now the question is, why would we need a new rule if I could just foil it out and use the old rules? Well, the reason is, sometimes you may not have just two things, you'll have multiple things, like three or four things, then you can extend the product rule. And also in the future, we won't be able to multiply these because the second term may have a square root and so on. So the product rule is essential. We do need it. Also want to warn you that in the textbook, the product rule may not have the derivative in this order. It, it, it does have it as y prime equals f of x times g prime of x plus f prime of x times g of x. So it just flip-flops, puts that in the front and that at the end. Same thing. I prefer it the way I have it, just in case you have y equals f times g times h. If you have three functions, then you know that, hey, we have to take turns. f's derivative comes first, then copy down the g and h, keep the f, the derivative of the second, keep the sec third one, and keep the first two, take the derivative of the third. Okay, so having that order does help. The next rule of the section is the quotient rule, and that involves division. So this is rule number six. We'll be seeing one more rule in the next section, and that'll be about it. So the sixth rule, the quotient rule, 
states that if you have a quotient, that is, if y is equal to f of x divided by g of x, then y prime is a little bit more complicated than the product rule. You take the derivative of the top, f prime of x, and multiply it with g of x. So it's similar to the product rule, but in the product rule you then had a plus, but here you have a minus, then you keep f as it is, take the derivative of g, and then it gets a little bit longer all over the denominator squared. Okay. So this is the quotient rule, and the best way to memorize this is to actually do a bunch of questions. Let's start off with one here. Let's say you have y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 1 divided by x cubed plus 5x squared. So this is the f function on the top, g on the bottom. y prime, take the derivative of the top. So the derivative of the top goes there. Times the bottom, so the bottom goes there. Then you have a minus, and keep the top as it is. Times g prime, derivative of the bottom, all divided by bottom squared. So I'm putting these placeholders because the parentheses are important. Without the parentheses, the negative sign won't distribute multiplication won't happen correctly. So let's do it. f prime, the derivative of the top, 2x plus 2 times g, nothing happens to g, minus, keep the top, x squared plus 2x minus 1 times g prime, derivative is 3x squared plus 10x all over bottom squared. Now you don't have to simplify it, but if you do, make sure you do it correctly. No canceling here due to the subtraction, for example. Okay, so I'm going to move straight on to the worksheet. So please print that off to keep along with me if you already haven't done so. So we have a few questions here, and we are expected to find the derivative by using the product rule or quotient rule. So normally you might have just foiled this out and avoided the product rule, but let's follow the instructions just to get used to it. This is f, this is g y prime as per the product rule take the derivative of the first f prime keep g as it is plus in the product rule it's a plus keep f as it is and then multiply it with g prime what's the derivative of f well, 3 comes down so it's 6x squared constant no derivative there keep g as it is plus keep f as it is derivative of that, that's linear, it's just 3. And you can leave it in that form. Simplifying, we'll, we'll work on that in chapter 4. Now here we have a product of three functions, f, g, and h, so we'll take turns. Well, this is f also. We'll call this p, q, and r, just to be different. Derivative of the first, 1. Don't do anything to the second and the third, plus keep the first, derivative of the second, that's linear, just a 2, keep the last one as is, then keep the first and the second, derivative of the last as 5. Okay, let's do the next one. Here we're going to need the quotient rule. So, <coughs> this is f on top, g on bottom, and you can rewrite this as x to the one third in order to take the derivative. Okay, so let me zoom that in a bit. Zoom in. All right, so y prime, we take the derivative of the top, keep the bottom as it is, minus, keep the top as it is, take the derivative of the bottom, all over bottom squared. So let's do the derivative of the top, one third comes down, x to the one third minus one, that's negative two thirds. Keep the top derivative of the bottom, that's a simple one, 2x. So once again, don't do any illegal cancellations because of the minus there. You can just leave it as it is. One final one before we do an application. Derivative of the top, keep the bottom, minus keep the top, times the derivative of the bottom, all over bottom squared. Bottom is best. So we put the derivatives in these blank spots. From here you get 4t, that's 0. From there, that's 0. 
It's a negative, the 2 comes down, negative 2t, 4 comes down, minus 12t to the 1 less power, t cubed. Okay, moving down to the very last question. Finding the equation of the tangent line, let's stop right there. For this, it's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So you have this curve, which may look kind of like this, I'm just making it up for now. We need to figure out the tangent line at a point negative 1, 0. So m is what we need. This is your x1, this is your y1. We have those. To get m, we need y prime. And for this, we need to use product rule. We have f times g, derivative of the first, 2x. Don't do anything to the second. A plus. Keep the first. Derivative of the second is just 2. Now we'll find y prime at negative 1. Plug in negative 1 for x. And that becomes negative 2. That's negative 2 plus 4. When you plug in negative 1 there, it becomes 1. Because negative 1 squared is positive. So that wipes out this entire term. That goes to 0 because of 1 minus 1. So this is 4 minus 2, which is 2. There we go. Slope is negative 4. So the answer, y minus 0, is negative 4 times x minus negative 1. So it's x plus 1. All right. Make sure you try the homework and let me know if you have any questions.